This is Supreme Court Justice Bernadette Clark. She's had a lifetime of firsts for women in our region. In 1994, she was the first woman to be appointed to the position of first assistant district attorney for Oneida County. In 2000, she was elected the first woman family court judge in the same county. In 2005, she was elected the first woman to the Supreme Court for the 5th Judicial District, which includes Lewis and Jefferson counties. And most recently, the first woman to be appointed to deputy acting administrative judge in our district as well. I'm happy to say that's going to be my last first, though, probably. Uh, I don't think so. I, I think you know. might have one more in One more in me? <laughs> we laughed about it being her last first, but who knows? Supreme Court Justice Bernadette Clark has had a whole career of wins that were against all odds. So I sat down with her at her home in Utica to catch up and talk about her extraordinary career. So unlike your courtroom, this interview is not going to be impartial at all. <laughs> you are somebody I have a great deal of respect for and have known for a very long time. So thank you so much oh, for doing this. I, Alex, I couldn't be happier being here today. This is a thrill for me as well. I first met Judge Clark just under 10 years ago when I was trying to start my career and she agreed to be my very first interview. While difficult to do in a position like hers, she thinks it's important for people to know their elected officials. I think people should know who their judges are. But even more than that, the importance of her story. The importance to people that are maybe afraid to take a leap of faith and be a first, just like her. Those firsts mean something, not just to me and my family, of course, but they mean something to all the other young women who are out there thinking, hey, you know, is it, when's it gonna be my turn? And I tell them, you make your turn, because you know what? The bottom line was, nobody wanted me to run. When I ran, my own party was against me, initially. But I didn't let that stop me. People said to me, why, you know, do you know that there's people out there saying that, you know, you shouldn't run for this, that it's someone else's turn? I said, you know what, I'm gonna make my own turn. Because you know what, they're never gonna pick me. So I have to do this, against all odds. And she did, and says she was able to do it from a full lifetime of being one of a kind. So as accomplished as you are in the law, you didn't rush into it. No, in fact, I had a whole career before then. I was in sales and marketing. And when I graduated from St. Mary's College out in Notre Dame, Indiana, I came back to the area and I was a, a sales representative. And back then, I called on different grocery chains and so forth. And I was the only woman sitting in a room, you know, waiting to be called into the buyer. And everyone was smoking, of course, except me. And I'd be under this cloud of smoke and, and they'd be all talking. And I would be just like sitting there watching because I was the new, new guy on the block, so to speak. She became very successful in that job. She worked it for 13 years. Then, while watching her brother graduate from law school, got inspired and quickly left the ad world to start a career in the law. You know what? I want, I want to be a lawyer. And that very next day, I applied for uh, the uh, LSATs to take the test to start the process. After graduating from Syracuse, she landed a job at a small law firm before being appointed as the first woman as first assistant district attorney in Oneida County. It was there where she started using the law to change the lives of children for the better. I started prosecuting child abuse and child sex abuse cases and domestic violence cases. And that started me wondering why all the, we had all these victims. And that eventually led me to family court because I said, we've got to get to these kids earlier. Something's wrong. Judges have to be more in tune to this abuse that's going on. Because, you know, Alex, abuse, you know, kids aren't two or three years old and being attacked on the street by strangers. This abuse and neglect is going on in their homes. One case in particular, she says, propelled her to the family court. I can recall being in the grand jury and having um, this, this young boy who um, was a cerebral palsy um, victim and he, um, but he was going to respite. And 
he was abused by the person who was giving his parents the respite. And he, he, was, he had such a dramatic effect on my life. He, we, I sat on the floor with him in the grand jury and he gave his testimony and his hands were holding the microphone. I still get choked up when I think about it. But he told his story and the grand jurors were all sobbing. I mean, it was the most emotional thing I'd ever been through. And that, that one thing really propelled me to family court. The difference with family court judgeship, though, is that it's an elected position. And a woman in her county had never held it. If you realize what it takes to put your name out there for election, it's brutal. The things people say, things people call, the names people called me, oh, she wears too much makeup, she dyes her hair, her skirts are too short. I mean, I heard it all. She's the Barbie doll that wants to be a judge, you know, this and that. You have to have thick skin to do this. That story after the break. And later, is the law broken? We'll be right back. 